Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Picture Perfect by Corax Games and Arcane Wonders. This is a two to four player game for ages 10 and up, and it takes roughly about 45 minutes to play. And in the game Picture Perfect, you are playing as the host of a dinner party. Now, you've invited a ton of people to the party, and just like any party, some people get along with other people, sometimes they don't get along with certain people, sometimes they don't like certain types of people, and because of this, you're going to need to arrange your dinner guests according to their wishes. Each game, the wishes of the dinner guests will change, and thusly, each game is going to be unique in each character's perspective of what they like and what they don't like. Players are going to get a wide variety of a cast of these different unique characters, as well as a kind of folder that hints as to what type of things they like, They'll get a screen and a board and all this as well as the dinner table arrangement And then they're gonna play through a number of rounds going through and trying to figure out what their guests like and what they don't like and arranging them as follows each player is going to be doing this individually, but all the guests will like the same things. And at the end of the game, when all of the cards have been drawn from the round deck, whoever has the best position guests, according to their wishes, will score the most points and be the winner of the game, Picture Perfect. Can you make a perfect picture? Find out in this wonderful game that actually does have you taking pictures. I'll talk about the setup, how to play, and then of course, my review. To begin setup for the game, Picture Perfect, the first thing you do is determine the number of players playing the game. Based on the number of players, each player is going to get a mat. This represents the floor of their dinner party. They are going to get a screen, which re represents a panorama of your dinner party. So the outskirts, left, right, and back walls. And you're going to set up your little panorama, which looks kind of like this. Additionally, you're going to get a table. There are two different types. It doesn't matter which one you pick up. Just take that and place it on the big rectangle space on the bottom floor mat of your dinner party. Then you'll be taking a number of decorations. Decorations in the base game, Game. The simple game is going to just be for looks, but you'll be utilizing these as auction pieces during the more advanced variant. Take 10 random ones, it doesn't matter which ones you take, and go ahead and set up your table. After that, you're going to then shuffle these cards here. These are called um, like direction cards. Basically, once you've shuffled these, depending on the number of players you're playing with, three to four cards for the three to four player game and then there's also a two player variant as well where you take those cards and place them within reach of all players. Give everybody a VIP card. These cards are going to be useful secret cards that you can place in envelopes and then of course envelopes. Give each player a number of envelopes based on the number of players and the rest will go in the middle. In a two player game each player is going to get five envelopes and there's going to be four in the middle. Each of these envelopes is going to have three unique cards in them, and these are cards that discern what your guests like and what they don't like. Before you set up the game, hopefully you have made sure that you shuffled these, this deck of cards up and dealt three for each of the envelopes. The last thing you need to do is give each player a number of the characters. There are four sets of characters, and for each player playing the game, you'll give them a set of all of the characters, and there's quite a wide variety of cast and crew members. The last thing is you're going to be giving each player a little turn mark or a little uh, victory point marker, which you can just set aside for the end of the game. And somebody will start with the starting player reference card. From there, go ahead and set aside any of the characters you're not utilizing or boards and screens and decorations. And then you're ready to play the game picture perfect. Playing the game is even easier than setting the game up. Basically, once you have your characters with all of their likes and dislikes in these little envelopes here, you are going to be able to go through them and look at each of the cards in the envelopes. Make sure that you never switch cards from one envelope to another. These are for the specific person and their likes and dislikes. And remember, they're always gonna be random each game. So when you take a look at them, you're then going to have the opportunity to place any characters that you would like. You can always go back in and look, but you can never take out more than one set of uh, cards from an envelope at a time. So I could take out these guys here, but I'd have to wait to take out these guys until these guys have been put back. So only one at a time, three cards each. Sometimes the cards are going to say something like, oh, you have to place this character in front of the table. Uh, you have to make sure that this guest is able to be seen and this guest does not want to be near the dog. And so you're going to accordingly place your character in one of the squares along the dinner table uh, it, on this player mat board here. And once you've gone ahead and chose any of these specific guests or cast of characters and placed them down, everyone else will have that opportunity to do it at the same time. And then you're going to follow the card here. So after all players have looked in your portfolios and freely rearranged any of your figures at any time, you can always move these guys around. Then you're going to reveal the top card of the exchange deck and read that card aloud. Now I'm playing a two player mode, so I'll go ahead and take these guys away. 
and I will make sure that I set aside the auction cards. I have shuffled this deck up and I'll draw one of these cards here. The first card is gifts and it says both players give two envelopes to the other player. So what I'm gonna do is take two of my envelopes and I'm going to trade them with Callie over here and she will give me two of hers. Once you have gone ahead and done this specific thing, the revealing of the exchange deck, you're then going to follow the directions on the card and then di uh, discard the used exchange card and pass the reference to the next player. From there, once again, all players will look inside their envelopes. They will place any new guests or rearrange their previous guests however they'd like, trying to keep track of which characters want what and what they don't want because you may never see a character again once you pass it. And rinse and repeat. Draw a new one of these cards here, follow the text on the card, and then go ahead and pass the player marker and then place out more figures. You never have to place out more figures than you want to. Even if you've looked at a character and you don't think you're able to satisfy the goals of the character, you don't have to place them, but you're always able to take and place them off and on up until of course the last card of the deck. After the last card of the deck gets revealed, then you're going to finish the game off by placing your characters down and scoring. Scoring is pretty interesting. Before you score, what you're going to do is you're going to take your camera and take a picture of your panorama of guests. And once you have done that, that will be used for reference because sometimes guests are going to need to be hidden from view or need to be in front. So even if you want a character on your specific location, you might want to have them hidden so that, that you can't see their face or something along those lines. And so after you've taken your picture, you're gonna take this little panorama portion here and you're going to fold it down. This is going to be your scoring area. How you score is pretty simple. You'll take your marker and you'll place it on zero and then you will check, everybody will check each guest one at a time. The first one you'll check and you'll look at it. Okay, this is the corgi. The corgi wants to be uh, in front of the table and it wants to be seen. It wants to be next to the specific lady. If you get at least one condition correct, you're gonna get one point. If you get two, that'll be three points. If you get all three of the three, you'll get six points. And if you get none, it's negative three points. If you don't place a character, it's zero. There's also the last final little thing here, which is also kind of a variant. You don't have to include it if you don't want for your first game, but they're VIP cards. You can give each player a VIP card at the beginning of the game, and they can place these in any of the envelopes that they get at any point, and that will score double points for that specific character. So for instance, if I wanted the Corgi to score double points, maybe I know I'll get all three of his conditions, I can stick this VIP card in here. Now remember, the sooner you do this, this might get passed to another player and they might be able to see the VIP card. And thusly, they're gonna know that this is a double point valued character, so they'll want to utilize it. And that card will just, that character will just be worth more. So if I got all three for the Corgi, which is six points, and it had one of these VIPs in it, that would double to 12 points. And if there's two in there, it's 18 points. You'll track your victory points for each of the different envelopes moving along this track here, and then you will determine who has the most. Whoever has the most at the end of the game is the winner of the game Picture Perfect. Yep, it's that simple. Picture Perfect is a memory game, and it's also a spatial reasoning game. Your objective is to go through the envelopes that you receive and do the best you can according to the wishes of the character to place them on the panorama accordingly. However, sometimes their wishes might contradict each other. Sometimes maybe the dog will want to be in the front row and in the back row, in which case you may never get to accomplish more than one or even two of their objectives. Thusly, you're gonna be scoring less points. And as you know, the less objectives you score, the lower amount of points you get. Additionally, some characters' wishes just might not be able to be met at all based on when you receive the envelope. If you wait too long and you pull the doggo out and it turns out that he wants to be in the front row, but your front row is already filled and you know you're going to be scoring a lot of points on those, it might not be worth it to place the doggo and so some characters will be left out. You can also try and place as many as you possibly can to score as many as you possibly can and it's really going to kind of determine based on your ability to uh, remember what was in the previous envelopes and what placements are permissible and how you can arrange your panorama to still score as many points for each of the characters as possible. Throughout the game, they're considered rounds, but basically you're just taking out character uh, wishes from envelopes, looking at them and placing. So the first player will reveal a card, do what it says, and pass the player option to the next player, in which case you go back and forth. 
Additionally, there's also envelopes in the middle of the table that you're going to be able to pull from utilizing the action cards that get drawn at the end of the round. Try your best to at least get as many wishes as possible. You do not want to be stuck with the same character over and over again. Yes, it does kind of prevent players, other players, from being able to see that card. And it's also a good idea to kind of hide your VIP card if you're playing with it in order to score additional points. But it's always better, in my opinion, to try and gather as many cards and as much information as possible so you can make the best panorama, aka score, as you possibly can. What's also great about Picture Perfect is you're kind of using a unique scoring method at the end of the game. You're taking your actual cell phone camera, you don't have to necessarily, people can just look at it, but it's a lot easier to take a picture of your panorama and based on how you took your picture, will determine how you score. Because like I said, some characters do not want to be seen or other characters do not want a specific character to be seen. Maybe the old miser doesn't want the dog in the photo. So you're gonna do your best to hide the dog behind the tree while still meeting all of the dog's conditions. And of course, if you don't place the dog, then the dog's not there unless you don't meet the condition for hiding the dog. There is a lot of that going on in this game, and it is really fun. It's a very unique concept of creating a panorama, required requirements kind of changing as you place your characters down, and also each character's screen is hidden from you, so you cannot see their screens and what the information that they have is. The VIP card is an extra bonus, and the auction method is also a nice twist to the game, but the basic game on its own stands out very well. It's quick and easy to teach, it's easy to set up, and it's very simple to play. A couple qualms with the game is the first thing is you have to punch out all these characters and play standees with them, and they are each different sets, and there are a set of four of them with three, six, nine, 15 of them. So make sure you put a baggie for each of the 15 character sets for each of the players each time you clean up the game. It's not a huge deal, but if you get a mix and match, it could take a quite a bit of extra time. It's not necessary to set up. The main thing is sometimes you'll pull a character out and all the conditions do not work because he wants, they're all contradicting. I, I, I know there's no real way to kind of fix this issue, I guess, unless you made them all unique. But sometimes when the character wants to be in the front and the back, and then also wants to have his, uh, his buddy's face hidden, and you're like, I can't accomplish any of these goals. So you have to kind of, maybe it's not even worth playing that character. It doesn't take away from the game and it's scoring because everybody needs to understand that as well, or their panorama might be different than yours. But there was a few times where that kind of was like, ah, dang, I can't do that. The other thing is a Sometimes, potentially, you might kind of get screwed. You might have a character or characters you've never seen that are either in the middle or somebody has held them the entire game, and you don't get the opportunity to ever, ever see that character, but a lot of your other characters want that character on the board in some way, shape, or form. And so, without knowing, you might place a character that scores you negative points, and you come into these decisions where you have to determine is it actually worth it to place the character down at all not knowing his requirements or is it worth just um is, is it worth placing there just to get the points from your other characters and crossing your fingers and hoping because negative three points can definitely hurt you in this game the vip cards are not to be ignored as well but other than just the kind of randomness with the folders here and sometimes just not getting the, the folders that you want which is just something that happens in the game and is part of it Everything else about this game, I loved. I thought this was a really cool, unique game. It's different experience than I've ever played before as far as creating this kind of unique little scene that also has characters interacting in different ways. And you can kind of make the characters interact in different ways with characters on the panorama. So you actually create the scene of a dining room table. And it does have the sense of, yes, I've had parties before where somebody doesn't like somebody else or wants to be next to somebody else or is trying to hit on this lady or whatever. And, and so this feels like an actual old timey dinner party and with all of these kind of unique people that are all invited together to have this little greet, meet and greet. It's a lot of fun. It's very interactive. It's very thematic. And the quality is excellent. I love the different panorama backgrounds. I like how they just even made each of the different, they have different table colors. They have different decoration types and they're both front and back, except for on the back, they actually have a black silhouette, which is also really cool as well. So you can kind of rotate characters and whatnot. You can hide characters and make your own unique scene. I am a big fan of Picture Perfect. This will stay in my collection for a long time because it's a game that's really easy to play. It's great at spatial reasoning and helps with memory. It's good for your kids to play games like this and kind of get a sense of how they want to be placing these guys down. I love this game. If you're interested, if this just sounds like a game that you'd be interested in and you haven't played before and it like piques your interest, I'd highly suggest you pick, pick a, uh, take a look at this one or go ahead and pick it up. Yes, uh, excellent game, excellent.
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Picture Perfect by Arcane Wonders. If you're interested in picking up the game, there is a link down below in the description where you can purchase this beautiful masterpiece here. You can also, if you're so inclined, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button as well. It greatly helps us out and we do greatly appreciate it. And Monday through Fridays we do videos and on Sunday we have a live stream at 6.30 p.m. PST where you can see us play games just like this one here. That's pretty much all I got this time, guys. And as always, I look forward to creating a picture-perfect memory with you next time.